let me show you something over here because beneath this net is where I think the oil catastrophe becomes quite upsetting. Just have a look under here. We'll do it gently and quietly. Under there are 28 pelicans soaked in that toxic oil. Now, they think they'll save most of them. They're going to get underway cleaning them in just a few hours. But if this is what's happening to the wildlife on the shoreline, it's unbearable to think what's happening right now to the marine life beneath the sea. This is a really a man-made catastrophe. I mean, this is like the scale of hurricane, but it's an oil spill. Weaving through the maze of marshlands at the mouth of the Mississippi River, it doesn't take long to discover more oil pollution. Look at that, if you just run your hand up all these reeds, and that's what comes off. The slick has rippled through these sensitive wetlands, leaving its black mark, a toxic tide line that's strangling these plants. Look at it, all the way through, as far as you can see. Yeah. It's strong too, isn't it? You can really smell that oil. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fumes, so yeah. strong. Biologist Dr. Ricky Ott is a world expert in marine pollution. She saw firsthand 21 years ago how massive oil spills impact communities. Ricky was working in Alaska when the Exxon Valdez disaster struck. And even today, that pristine waterway has not fully recovered. What we have is an ecosystem that's still recovering and the scientists are saying it's going to be another 50 years minimum before that oil goes away. Exxon was considered the worst ecological disaster of its time. But already, even by BP's own estimates, this is 10 times worse. And the numbers here are rising every day. We have our priorities kind of wrong in this country and we were left wondering who rules? Is it we the people or is it we the corporation? The American public says no, no more dead dolphins, no more dead sea turtles, no more sick people, no more cultures destroyed, enough already of oil. If we can make 100% of our income, that has nothing to do with the federal government. This community is certainly saying enough. Kindra Arneson has become a crusader, the Erin Brockovich of Venice, Louisiana. A straight-talking southerner, not afraid to stand up to big oil and big government. Everything is dying. It's either dying or dead. They can't fix this. Everybody, we gotta get out of this pissing match and get everybody on the same page. If that doesn't happen, this is gonna affect the entire world. Some locals are trying to get the job done. Unable to fish, they're now paid by BP to scoop up oil. Proud fishermen suffering the indignation of working for the company that's wrecked their livelihoods. And their paychecks now come from this man. To those affected in your families, I'm deeply sorry. Tony Hayward is the British boss of BP and the lightning rod for so much American anger right now. There's no one who wants this thing over more than I do, and I'd like my life back. Me too, me too! I'd love my life back. My restaurant remains closed because I don't have time for my business right now. Because I have to take care of Tony Hayward's business because he can't take care of it himself. My heart says uh, that I'd like to spit in Tony Hayward's face. To be perfectly honest with you, he disgusts me. The cleanup will take years and BP has accepted full responsibility. So far, it's cost them one and a half billion dollars. Their headlong pursuit of profit now has them hemorrhaging money as fast as the oil gushing from their ruptured pipeline. But don't expect sympathy from anyone around here. And now their, their stocks are plummeting? Aww, you want a towel to cry on? Maybe you should use the one that's soaked with my tears. <laughs>